Hello and welcome to this session, where we will talk about if statement as part of control structure and decision making in Java. In this session, we will use two separate programs to see the use of if statement and nested if statement. The first program will use if and if else statement, and the second program will be utilizing nested ifs. Before we go over these programs, let's make sure we have a found understanding of control structure and decision making. All right, let's talk decisional structures and making decisions in programming. Before going over the program, let's break down the basic concepts of if statement and make sure we understand relational operators and expressions. Being able to conditionally execute statements or skip over statements is very important in programming as it is in real life situations. Every day we make lots of decisions based on any given situation. For example, if it rains, then we use umbrella. If it's sunny, we use sunglasses, and so on and so forth. In real life situations and in programming, the word if will give us the opportunity to evaluate our situation and make our decisions accordingly. Our common sense allow us to autonomously make those decisions in our lives, but in programming, on the other hand, we need to use a bunch of codes and follow certain syntax rules to do the same thing. Following are what we need to know before being able to write an if statement. These are understood by our arithmetic logic unit in our CPU, and we get to use them to help us navigate through our decisional structures. As you can see, these are our relational operators, the greater than, less than, greater than, or equal sign. Please note, we don't have a specific key for greater than or equal on our keyboard, so we need to use greater sign immediately followed by an equal sign. The same thing for less than or equal to. And then we have our equal equal, which translates to equal to. Please note that this is different than when we use only one equal sign, which is for sign statements. Moving on, we have our not equal to, which is again one of those important operators that we use. Now let's talk logical and and logical or. Before we even start this, let's talk about where you can find them on your keyboard. Logical and, which are two ands back to back, are on your keyboard shift and two sevens. If you hold your shift down two sevens, you're gonna have your and logical and. And last but not least, the logical OR. You can find this on your keyboard above your Enter key. Shift backslash, backslash, meaning shift two backslashes, will give you the logical OR operator. Here is a little exercise to understand how the logical AND and OR evaluates to and how does it work. As you can see, for and AND to be true, both sides has to be true. Whereas for an OR sign, as long as one side is true, the whole statement will hold true. This is very important to understand, as the difference between an AND and an OR in your program is, can easily be a logical error. Another thing I want to mention before we look at our code is our relational expression, which are true or false. For example, 12 greater than 5 evaluates to be true, but 7 less than or equal to 5 evaluates to be false. Keep in mind that true assigns 1 in our compiler and false assigns a 0 in our compiler. This simple program asks user to input a grade and the program determines if the grade is an A, B, C, D, or F. We will start by importing the scanner library to be able to get user's input. And here is the beginning of our class. I call it practice, you can call it whatever you want, as long as it's not a Java keyword and you are following the syntax rules. Please note that in Java, the name of your class is the same as the name of your file. If you end up changing the name of your file for whatever reason, be sure to change the name of your class as well, otherwise your program will not be working. Here we have our main method, and here's the definition of our variables for input. Since grade can be a decimal number, I'm going to be using a double as the variable type. Next, we're creating the scanner object. Scanner keyboard equal new scanner. This will set our environment ready to accept input from the user. You don't have to repeat doing this. Just doing this once, it'll, it's enough for the rest of your program. 
Next, a simple message to user to enter their grades. And now we're going to be accepting the user's input by using input cold keyboard dot next double. Note that next double with capital D is the name of the function in Scanlon library that we have imported on top of our program. Next double function is responsible for scanning the next token, which is what the user is inputting to make sure that it is the type double that we have asked for. Otherwise, an input mismatch exception will be thrown. In other words, it will give the user an error saying that your input does not follow what we have asked for. Now we will utilize if statement to compare these inputs against our numbers. So if the input is less than 60, the grade will be an F. If the grade is less than 70, the grade will be a D and so on and so forth. Let's run this program and see how it works in action. So I'm going to run this program. I'm going to click over here. The program is running now and it's going to ask me to enter a grade and I will tell you what the letter grade is. So if I put in, let's say, 98, it's going to tell me it's an A. Let me rerun it again. This time I'm going to put 56. It's going to tell me it's an F. And this time I'm going to be typing some gibberish, some letters in here. And this is the input mismatch exception I was talking about. And that is because we have the next double in here. It checks for the next token. And if the token is not a type double or number that we have over here, it's going to give us this um, error. OK, now let's look at this program. This is the same program, except we're doing a little bit more. We're using an input validation while using if statement and nested if with logical and and or. Since we don't want the user to be able to input any negative numbers or a grade above 100 or any character or string, we need to do some input validation. So right after asking the user to input the grade, I have used has next double function from scanner library. This function will check to make sure that what user is inputting is the type that we're asking for. In this case, we defined our variable grade with type double, um, and so it's going to check for the double. So we're using an if statement saying if the user input is indeed what we're asking for, then we want the these other parts of the program to be executed. So within this if statement, we're using a nested if to do the rest of our program. These other ifs are all dependent of the first if we used. They only execute if the first if holds true, which means only if the user inputs the right information, this other part of the program will be executed. Now the next line is saying that if grade is 100, then uh, we want to print out Wow, this is a perfect score. Please note the equal equal sign. If I change this to one equal sign, the program will not run properly. Uh, just keep in mind that any time that you're using an if and you're making an equivalence, like you're making something to be equal to something else to do certain things, it has to be equal equal. Next, we're using the else if. This time, we're setting a limit, saying that we're checking within our limit, saying if the grade is between 90 and 99, um, then the grade is an A. Since we're setting a limit, we're using an AND sign. And then it's a print statement that says this is equal to an A and so on and so forth. Same thing we're doing for uh, letter grade B, C, D, all the way to the F. Now, our last next if will check for grades that are less than zero and above 100. Now, check this out. Since we are checking outside of the range instead of within the range, like we did before for the grades, now we have to use or sign. If we mix this up, we can get a logical error. So be careful and pay close attention to where, when we're using and sign and when we're using or sign. At this point, we're skipping out of our nested if and we'll add an else clause for our first if statement that we were using, saying that this input that you're using or this characters or this strings that you're putting is not an input, but we don't have to check for what a user is inputting because in the else clause, it's going to count everything else that it's not the, the input that we asked for. It's going to count for all of that. Um, and then we're going to end the program. So let's go ahead and run this program and see how this program will work. So I'm going to use 
Control F11 to run the program. And over here, it's going to ask me to input your grade. Let's uh, start by putting a negative number. It's going to give me a message saying that can't the grade cannot be less than a zero. So I'm going to run the program again. And this time, I'm just going to type in some gibberish. And it's going to again give me a message saying that this is not, this does not look like a grade. So I'm going to run the program again. And this time, I'm going to put 100. It's going to tell me that, wow, this is a perfect score. You got an 8 based on what we had over here, the grade equal equal 100. Now I'm going to run the program again. This time I'm going to put, let's say, um, 87. Now it's going to give me the correct information here saying that you input at 87 and this is at B. Let's run it one more time and try the F. I'm going to use, let's say, 5. It's going to say your grade is 5. This is F. You need to repeat this course. This will conclude this session. I hope this helped you understand control structure and decision making in Java better.